my 30s, I got involved in the movement in my city. My father was doing his part, had become a registered minister and opened his own small church in an order to have a base of operation. My mother, as a teacher, was able to disseminate information to the youth, accuracy in the face of all the lies that they were told. It was a good thing that they made their money because there was no way they could stand against a juggernaut called institutional racism and continue on in their respective professions. But it didn't matter at that point. My father had lived his life ready to kill or die for what was important to him, and my mother was the backbone that kept the family body strong and straight. I'm sad to say, at that time, I was more like a virus than an antibody. It wasn't my intention. I had been developed to follow in my father's footsteps and had every intention of doing my parents proud, but I was watching as the policies of corruption in the government was killing young men and breaking families all over what seemed to be nothing but a smoke screen. I decided it was time to take something that was bigger than just the injustice against black people. It was the first major disagreement between my father and myself, and it was actually the last. He knew me well enough to know that I'd go my own way on this, and I knew him well enough not to try to convince him of my, of my cause. I was becoming idealistic in the era of free love, and I was watching as this conflict was hurting everyone, including black people. Cassius Clay, newly christened Muhammad Ali, was being stripped of his title, threatened with jail for refusing to serve. I thought that if we could stand with the white people against this, perhaps they would see that we were every bit as educated, as knowledgeable and conscious as they. And maybe they would begin to change their policies of hatred and discrimination against us. I didn't really ignore the fact that participation in the Second World War in Korea had made them see us any differently. I just thought, as most of the black youth that joined in on the protest, that it was this time it might be different. Of course it wasn't. Though they busted the heads of black and white protesters, though they used tear gas and batons and rubber and real bullets on us all, the war on black people continued unabated. Demoralization, dehumanization, vicious, evil, and tense with the hatred and poison in the blood and guts of the American death machine. I watched, horrified, as the southern black civil rights warriors were left bloodied and battered over and over again. I never realized until years later that watching involved seeing it on television. Therefore, the world watched and had to render judgment upon its treatment of its black citizens. And things began to slowly change. Thank you.